All right, hey, how you doing? So this is Neil from masterpaintingnow.com. I have a bunch of awesome courses. Check them out in the link below in the description. Let's go ahead and learn how to draw shoulders. Now it's important that when we're drawing shoulders, like how to draw them, lifted all the way up or lifted up like this and um, like this, for example. And that's what we're going to learn how to do is how, how, how to draw that. How does that look? Why does it look that way? And so to save some time, I just go ahead. I went ahead and drew this ahead of time because otherwise the tutorial will be that much longer. And this will get everything down quickly. So first we need to understand some of the anatomy that's happening. And like as you lift the arm up, what is happening with the bone structure and the muscles beneath everything so that we understand why it looks the way it does. This will help you draw it from your imagination. Right, so the first thing is, let's go ahead and make a new layer here. And I'll go ahead and draw with uh, like a reddish pink color here. So you can see on top of what I'm drawing. So the first thing is to understand is that you have with the shoulder, you have a collarbone, which is right here, like so. And that collarbone has like a, along with the collarbone and the sh part of your shoulder blade, from the top view has like a horseshoe shape. So if you were to view this from the top, you have like the collarbone like this, comes down, connects like so. Then you have this top part of the shoulder blade. And so then you have your deltoid from the top view, which kind of comes like this, and it comes, extends out in the back. So just remember that the deltoid attaches to the, to the, about halfway to the collarbone and also around to the backside of the shoulder blade, this top, from this top view. And this right here would be like, this right here would be like the side view of the neck or the top view of the neck, right? Like that. Then you have the pec muscle, which attaches along here to the top part of the collarbone, goes underneath the deltoid, and the pec muscle comes out like this, right? So that's from the top view. Hopefully that kind of makes sense. And so this right here wraps around the backside like that. And so the deltoid, it connects right about here to the collarbone, and it comes down like this, and it has this shape right here. So that's the shape of the deltoid right there. It connects if you have the So let's say you have the humerus bone in there. It connects to this outer part of the humerus bone to the side view over here. I'm not going to go, I'm not gonna go too much detail about this. Um, I go through this in my anatomy course. Again, you can check the link out in the description. Then you have the pectoral muscle, which connects right about here to here on the collarbone. So it occupies the first half of the collarbone. And then the pectoral muscle comes, and it goes underneath the deltoid like that, and it connects to around the same spot. I'm not going to get too technical here. Then you have the sternum, which comes down like so. You have the rib cages, or the rib cage. You have the rib cage from cages. I meant to say rib bones. And, and then the pec muscle comes and attaches along this right here to the edge of the collar, and it comes down and connects to these couple first ribs right here. Then it comes up at an angle like this. Right? And you can think about it as three, three parts like that. The breast on a woman attaches on top of this right here like that. So it has that shape. You just kind of imagine that shape attached on top of it. Remember, if you haven't watched my previous lesson on drawing the torso of the female, definitely check that out. Remember I talked about this piece of skin right here. This piece of skin is important. And that is, that creates this distance right here between the breast and the collarbone. And so if you imagine that piece of skin there, um, then you have the breast coming off of that. And that's that part that's between your pectoral muscle and the deltoid. So if you keep that in mind when you're drawing the arm and raising it up, it makes a lot more sense. Because right here, this is with the, if you, when you shrug, when you shrug your shoulders like this, you're actually lifting your collarbone higher. See my collarbone's here. You're actually lifting it up like this. So the collarbone is going up like this. See that? So collarbone goes up. Boom. That's how you actually lift your shoulders. You have to actually lift the collarbone and shoulder blade up. Shoulder blade being the back part. So when the collarbone lifts up like this, that changes the orientation of the arm. Because when, when you lift your arm, it's hard to put your arm straight down. You can do it. It's just harder. It, it's more natural to leave it kind of out like this. When that happens, keep in mind, the side of the bone is still here. And just to get an idea of what I'm talking about. So here's the collarbone. There's the collarbone. I'm going to mirror, mirror this on each side. Here's the pectoral muscle, and this is where it connects right there. So that side and side is the same. And so this shape right here is going to carry over to right here, like that. See, because it lifts up, so you got to imagine that. You got to imagine the shape lifting up. 
and it's still connecting to that part of the collarbone as the collarbone lifts up. We're also going to go into how to draw it up high like this, but this is important to understand first. All right. And as you lift the collarbone up like this, another thing that lifts up is everything else attached to it. So remember the pectoral muscle is attached here, along here, goes here, comes down, right? And so when you lift the, when you shrug the shoulder up, notice how the breast, the nipple is higher, right? Because it lifts the entire pectoral muscle up, which means it has to lift the breast up because the breast is attached to the pectoral muscle. Men and women have the same muscles. So, you know, women have the same pectoral muscle. They just have fat attached to it. So when you lift the pectoral muscle up and stretch it up, the breast is going to lift up too. So you can see the breast would normally be kind of shaped like this. But when the collarbone is lifted up like this, then that makes the shoulder also lift up because remember the shoulder is attached to this part here. And that makes the shoulder also lift up like that. Then what else happens? You also have the pectoral muscles connected here. Remember, it's connected here and here. So because the pectoral muscle is connected here, the pectoral muscle is stretching, right? In this case, from here to here. Let me go ahead and do that in blue so you can see it from there to there. So that distance right there. That's important to understand. And because of that, the, remember, and remember the pectoral muscle also, the arm is, the pectoral muscle is also attached here. So remember it goes like this, like this, down here, and like that. So that point now is up here, which means the pectoral muscle has stretched from here like this, right? And so because we have that stretch, the pectoral muscle coming here, coming off like this, coming down, and coming across like that, that causes all this, that causes this this little piece of skin right here. That's normally between the, here's the deltoid. You have that piece of skin right here, then you have the breast, right? So that piece of skin right there between is now being stretched. So now you can see it's being stretched up like this. So now that piece of skin right there is going over here. Let me draw that blue again. So this piece of skin is now right here, right? It's being stretched. That's important to understand. So now, and then they have the bicep, which actually goes over the pectoral muscle as well. So the pectoral muscle goes underneath it. And now, now you have this kind of shape like that. And that's why you have this shape over here. So now you have the deltoid, which is like this. Then you have the pectoral muscle. Remember, it's coming like, it's coming underneath. It's attached right about here. And it's coming across like that and it's being stretched like this. Now you have the pectoral muscle. Being, it has this kind of, when it's, when it's stretched up like this, it kind of takes a shape like this right here. So kind of, right, right, that S shape right there. And the, and the, and the boob is still attached to the pectoral muscle. So since the pectoral muscle, it was like this, right? Now it's being stretched up. The pec, since the pec is being stretched up, the top of the breast where it attaches is being stretched up too. So now the press take on more of a look like that, right? The oval kind of goes up. You don't have to draw all this shape there. Um, it kind of flattens out a little bit, so, but that's important to understand. Now, another thing happens too, because you have, so you have, remember you have the deltoid here, like that. The pectorum also goes underneath the deltoid, like I said. And then you have the bicep, which actually goes over that. So now you have the bicep coming in here but along with the bicep, you also, and then you have the pectoral muscle going underneath there, you have this curve of skin right here. So the same skin that's over here on this side, between the breast and the deltoid, that same piece of um, skin is here, but now it's going to be curved. Oops, I don't know why it's drawing. There we go. I was using the eraser side of my pen and it was drawing for some reason. So notice that right here, so you have the, the deltoid, the pec goes underneath the and then this comes over and that causes this kind of crease like this. And this is the underside of the arm a little bit you're seeing. You're seeing some of the underside of the armpit. We'll go into that when we draw a little arm lifted up as well. All right, so if we want to draw the arms lifted up much higher, 
I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that layer. I'm going to just lightly erase all of this here because we're going to draw the arms differently now. So we're going to draw the arms up like this now. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of a lot of this. Like so. Now it's important here, I'm going to make another layer. Okay, so you have the collarbones being lifted up. So when, when you lift the shoulder way up like this, the collarbone goes from, from what would normally be like this. Now it goes up like this and it's going behind the deltoid muscle. Deltoid muscle is now going to be like that and it comes in front of it. So it's going, when you get lifted up like that, your deltoid is actually going behind. The deltoid, the muscle is big enough to fit in front of it. So when you lift it up, it looks like it's going behind. So, but really the deltoid or the collarbone is like this. Boom, like that. Dismember, it's behind there. So when you lift the arm up, the deltoid has to go upward. Now, once you know, remember, the reason why I wanted to show where the deltoid muscle and the pec muscle attaches to the collarbone and the arm is so you know if those things move, those attachment points have to move as well. They have to stretch. So remember you have the you have the bone here and you have the muscles that are attached to that bone. So remember right here the deltoid attaches there and the pec muscle attaches there. Then you have the collarbone being lifted up like this. We know the deltoid attaches here and here. We know it attaches along the sternum on these first couple um, rib bones and then it attaches way up here. So now we know the deltoid, it has to come like this, it has to come all the way down here now. See that? So that's the deltoid. Bam. Huge muscle right here. And it's it's stretching from here to here. Oops. About like that. So that's how much it's stretching. And then the deltoid is fitting on top of that. Remember it connects here. It overlaps the pec muscle. That would be the deltoid, like that. And then I'm going to go back to the pec muscle. And remember, it its whole entire shape is like this. Right, so you can imagine how these things kind of look when they're when they're shaped. Of course, you want to also study from these different points of view, uh, models, or study yourself in the mirror, or take a picture of yourself. But you want you want to study how the how the pec Toral muscle shape changes from the side view, which would be more like this, and then how when it stretches up here, the point is up here now, it's going to kind of, you know, change the shape a little bit. All right, so there's the pectoral muscle. Now, then we got to deal with the deltoid. So we know that the pectoral muscle is going to stretch up like that, and the deltoid also it connects here, it connects along this part of the. Um, under under the, under the side here, which you can't see, part of the collarbone, and so it's going to have. Just remember that from the from this from this view, it's going to have a shape like that. So you're seeing a lot of the deltoid right here, and the deltoid and the pectoral muscle. Just imagine they kind of blend in together as one muscle like this. One, so when the arms up like that, it all just kind of blends in like this. Just imagine it as one one shape, with 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 the different shape. Well. A dividing point. So imagine a full shape of the muscle. That's how I imagine. I imagine. I I just start when I lift arms up. I just imagine the deltoid, and like that. It's just one shape to me. So this whole entire pectoral muscle, deltoid, just kind of takes a big shape. And there's a division line right here where the, you know, where the muscle would be like that. And that and that was usually going to be shaded depending on where the lighting is coming from. So imagine that whole entire shape like that. And then you have a dividing line here come down like this. So it's going to be kind of like that. Now because the the pectoral muscle, the breast is attached to the pectoral muscle, all that lifts up, so the whole entire breast lifts up. And that's why on this side now, the breast is lifted up like that. All right? So it has that oval shape there. So normally, your breast would come down like this. And this is still lifted up a little bit, so technically actually your breast would kind of be more, it has kind of like an oval shape out like this. But this is this is lifting up a little bit on this side, so it lifts the breast up a little bit, the breast up a little bit as well. Hopefully that makes sense now. 
you know how and why that would that would look that way and so hold on so here let's go ahead and there we go just for a little bit of guideline there so let's go ahead and draw the neck here we're going to draw what the where all this would be we're going to kind of draw the rib cage and everything so we're going to, we're going to sketch this out as if we were sketching like that and then we know the collarbones so the first thing is we got to decide how how high because normally collarbones would come off like this right and you have the neck muscle come down you have the deltoid come out we'd have this shape and this is important too let's go ahead and get this shape down really fast there's a shape here between the breast so normally the breast would come down like this and you would have the breast fitting because you have the space I already went through all this I'm not going to teach it all again but normally the breast would come like this maybe maybe a tad bit higher not much higher though right the breast comes off like that and then you have your nipple somewhere on there you have that piece of skin right here this is important then you have your deltoid coming off here I want to keep that whole entire shape and deltoid and then the arm coming down like that so all that's really important but we want, we want to lift all this up and something to keep in mind that I wanted to show right here was you have that so you have your rib cage right here. You have the space between your deltoid and your pectoral muscle. So if you were to imagine this pectoral muscle coming off like this, and you have your deltoid overlapping that like so. Remember you have that space in between. So right here, the space between the rib cage and the deltoid muscle like this, you have this space here. And remember the breast comes off of that space right there right like that that that's what gives you that piece of skin right here between there and just imagine that piece of skin imagine the shape coming all the way across like this as a shape right here this is the shape I want you to memorize like that so if you had the deltoid over here as well arm coming down just remember you have that shape so the breasts come off of that you have this shape right here I'm gonna fill this shape in Imagine it like uh, if you had pulled your shirt up and over the breast, how you'd have the shirt would still wrap around right here and here like that. And if you had the shirt on, it would go like this, right? I'm not, we're not going to draw that part of it, but just up to the collarbone. But that's kind of like you can imagine it being a t-shirt that you lift it all the way up over your breast. Now it's curving back on or back around so the shirt's curving back around like that on the other side. If you memorize that shape right there and know that that shape is always going to be there and it's rather flat, you'll have so much easier time drawing shoulders and your your breasts and stuff. Okay, let's go ahead and get rid of all this and let's get back down to what we were drawing, which is going to be the arms raised. So I'm going to go back here. I'm going to come back into the rib cage because we want to kind of have that rib cage shape in there like so all right so as we lift the arms up we'll do arm lift it all the way up first you have the part of the right here the collarbone like this and the collarbone's going to come all the way up like this this is the shape of the collarbone like that so you're going to lift the collarbone up high And then the muscle right here, your trapezius, which actually is the, this muscle right here is a part, it's a part like more connected to the back. Trapezius muscle is going to go behind this. So it's being over, right? When you lift this collarbone up, it's in front of, so it's foreshadowing or whatever you want to call it. It's in front of the other thing, the other object. So it goes behind it. But if not, it would go like that but because it's being covered, we only draw it to there. Now remember the pectoral muscle and the deltoid, everything is being stretched up. So we have, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and just kinda, we're gonna draw the connecting point. So what I like to do 
is just draw where you know you want the arm to go. So I want the arm to go up that way. We're just going to kind of put some basic shape here for the hand. We're not going to redraw it like that. Once I know that's where the target is, you know, like I want this target point and this target point. So I want that bone right there. And that's what I'm imagining. And so I can draw this, you know, I would normally just draw a basic shape like this. Oops. Like a triangle like that. And then I'd have the hand coming off like that as a basic shapes. Just to quickly get the idea of where I want stuff to be. Now, once I have that idea, I know that all these muscles are going to stretch. Now, a muscle I didn't really cover is the uh, laticeus dorsi or your, your wing muscles. And that's this muscle right here. And I didn't really go over that too much, but it's kind of important to understand how all that works and how it connects to make the armpit and that shape. And that's really important to understand the overall shape, especially if, you, if it all turns toward you. And you start to see some of that underneath here. I'm not going to go through that in this lesson because it's a lot more anatomy to learn. But if you wanted to go through all that, I either recommend my course that's on sale right now for $10 on my site, which is my anatomy course for figure drawing. That is like a 60-hour course that will literally teach you everything you ever wanted to know about how to draw the human figure um, and all the anatomy muscles and attachments, how they all work, so, stuff like this, but but even more in depth. And then I also have a more a quicker a quicker course, which sounds um, deceiving because right now it's it's called How to Draw Anime People and Bodies. Even though it's called that, How to Draw Anime People and Bodies, it's actually um, has a big section of it that's dedicated to anatomy, but it's done in a much quicker way going through the most important anatomy parts like how the arm looks, for example, and the dorsi and all that, how all those muscles connect and how they stretch and look when they move up or down. And so I recommend that course as well. Um, I don't think that one's on sale on my site, but if you want the course, a discount for the course, just go ahead and shoot, shoot a message. Uh, matter of fact, you can just in the comment section say, hey, I want a discount of that course because it's normally like 50, 50 or 60 bucks, I think. Might even be 100, I can't remember on Udemy, but if you want a discount, just let me know and I can shoot a a link, a coupon link, uh, and then you can click on that and get it for like 10 bucks or something, 12 bucks, something like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and continue this. Imagine that the deltoid then, I have this arm coming like this, like that bone, so I know my deltoid is going to connect up here, and it's going to have this shape like this, right? So I know that's going to, that's going to be there, and it's going to over, it's going to overshadow, right? It's going to come over the collarbone like that, because I know that part of the collarbone from there to there is where the deltoid attaches. But remember I said from the top view, it kind of makes this, like from the top view, it kind of makes this shape like that, almost like a horseshoe shape. So, show, oops, damn it, didn't talk right. So when you lift it up, that shape comes back around like this over there. And so the deltoid is connecting up here. So just remember that, this shape right here. So now you can get rid of the deltoid. That deltoid is going to be the collarbone because the deltoid comes in front of the collarbone like that. And I'm just going to draw the other part of the arm on here. Like so, okay. Now another part that's important, remember, is this shape right here continues to come down because underneath that you have the deltoid like this. And the deltoid is connect, connect here, connect here, where it went through this, and it kind of comes like that. Now it's going to be coming up like this, right? So this is going to create this kind of shape like that. And that is important to understand how that muscle is working because that creates the shape that we need, we need to draw in here. So between the deltoid here, you're going to have, well one, you're going to have the arm, part of the arm muscle, which will be here. Again, we're not going to go through all of this right now. And then the latissimus dorsi, which is actually coming behind over here. But right here is important to understand that the deltoid comes and it has this shape right here. Why does this shape right here exist? Why did I just draw that shape? I just showed you why, because I had the deltoid underneath here, the pectoral muscle underneath that, and then the fatty tissue overlaps and it connects, not overlaps, but it connects to the pectoral muscle and it's shaped like that. It's being stretched upward, right? And that's what gives me this line right here. I'm going to draw that in blue or something. That gives me this line, right? No, nope, not blue. Let's go red gives me this line right here. Right? So that's important. I'm not sure if you're able to see that. So I'm going to kind of erase some of this here. I'm going to show that line again. This line right here. That 
that line is important. That's why that line exists there. So, and this is this is important to understand. Even if you're drawing from reference, it's important to understand why the reference looks the way it does. That is, if you look at a photograph or something like, well, why does it look that way? I'm going to kind of erase some more of this underneath it, like that. Okay, so I'm gonna, we'll go to that side in a second. So that that gives us that shape there. Now, obviously, this isn't going to all be there anatomically, right? So you might not be able to see all those. I'm going to get rid of the hair right here. Not necessarily going to be able to see all the all that detail of the muscle. So, but we just want to know that 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 shape is there and why it's there, right? So let's go ahead and just add a little bit of this shape right here. We might be able to see a little bit of this detail like that. Um, I think you might be able to see a little bit of this other muscle. I'm not going to go into all this right here, but that's going to be dark underneath there like that. Um, I think. Well, technically, if I if I I typically draw with so the shadow would be over here. I'm imagining how I typically draw, which is the light would be coming from in front of the person to the side, I mean here, to the side, above, and in front a little bit. And so that's how I do the, that's why the face and stuff was partly shadowed like that. Anyway. So the light would actually, if the head was in the way, the light would actually hit like this, and this would all be, like in shadow, you might be able to see a little shadow there, and then you'd see like the arm being lit. However, because the head's in front of the way, you're going to probably have a shadow that goes like that, and it kind of curves around the deltoid, and then you might be able to see like something like this that part and anyway and then you'll have this muscle I'm not going to go and shade all that alright so this line right here is important don't have to draw it all the way up like that because you're not going to be able to see all that detail another detail you're definitely going to be able to see though is the skin as it stretches right here this is the so this is the pectoral muscle and then between the pectoral muscle and the and the and the back muscle you have this latissimus dorsi which is coming up and it's being stretched as well so this is not the rib cage this is actually a muscle the rib cage would be more like right about like there, like that. And so that's that's going to be in the back, the latissimus dorsi. And then we're going to just draw the basic shape of the nipple here, it being stretched upward, right? Because it's being elongated. So if it's down here, it's going to be more rounded like this but the areola actually gets stretched because when you lift your breast up and it, it becomes more elongated this way it's more it's more shaped like that more elongated the areola also stretches with it keep in mind that the breast muscle or not muscle uh, pectoral but the I meant to say the breast the fatty tissue is coming like this and it's typically because it's stretched upward like that, it's typically not going to overlap the rib cage or the latissimus dorsi. So this muscle here is going to be, you're going to be able, you're, in other words, you're going to be able to see that muscle. And I don't want to, it's shaped like that. I'm going to kind of change this a little bit. You're going to be able to see this right here, like that. However, the shadow is going to come on this side. This is almost always in shadow when viewed from this angle, right, like so. So now we have the breast coming like that. Now, now the shadow would also come, it would shadow all this right here. Now, remember this whole entire shape right here, this is the shape I'm dealing with as a whole now. That's the shape I want to memorize when I lift my arms up. And it's very similar to a man. A man shape would be like that, and it would come like this, right, but very similar. So if you memorize the man shape, the female shape is almost identical. It just has the breast like this being stretched and attached on top of it. Other than that, it's the same. So remember, the the man shape is like that, almost almost exactly the same. The woman just has a breast that attaches on top of that. Remember, about you know three fourths of the boob comes outside of the pec mu pectoral muscle. So if you learn the shape of the pectoral muscle, it just comes outside of that. And let's go ahead and get rid of that shape. There we go. So there you have it. Um,
that'd be how you draw that side of it. Now I'm gonna add a little more shading here because the shape of everything is based on you know the shadows and how the light hits it. And that will bring out that 3D shape. I want to still make that line be there like that. The breast will probably have a shape like this. This will be the main shadow form shadow like that and the highlight will probably be hitting like there and it might come up like that a little bit and so everything else would be you know like if I just kind of imagine like that everything else would be kind of a mid-tone sometimes I'll just kind of draw the mid-tone in there like that and then you kind of just erase where you know you'd have more like something like that all right, so next thing is what if the arm isn't lift all the way up there? Does anything change if you just lift the arm up sideways like this? So let's go ahead and just draw this in. Again, I'm just doing the basic shapes there. So when the arm comes out to the side, we still have the collarbone. The collarbone's coming up like this now. Then you have the arm bone, right, the humerus bone. We know it's attached in there, so just keep the attachment point. So we have attachment point here, which is for the deltoid and the pectoral muscle. Pectoral muscle is underneath the deltoid, so let's imagine that first. It stretches to here, to this first half of the collarbone. Connects down to the, connects across, connects to the edge of the sternum. Some of the rib cage here, some of the first couple of ribs. I think it's like, I don't know, fifth to the seventh rib. And then it's going to stretch up like this. However, that's not going to be the exact shape of it. It's going to kind of come like this and like that. So that's going to be like the shape of the pectoral muscle. Remember, the breast is simply attached onto that right here. And so you can kind of imagine what the shape would be. It would kind of go like that. Boom. So it's, it's being pulled up a little bit, but not as much as this side because the arm isn't being stretched up as high. So the pectoral muscle isn't being stretched as much. Here, you can see the pectoral muscle is being stretched a lot more. So the breast is being pulled up, pulled up more. Right, so that's the basic idea. Then you got to think about the mechanics of the, the deltoid. So it connects here. We know that it also connects to this first half right here of the collarbone. But we also know that it goes around like that and goes and connects to the other side. So it's actually going to go like this. And the reason why it looks like this from this front view and then this muscle goes behind it is because the deltoid is going, it wraps all the way around to the back side. Um, Again, check out my anatomy course. You want to get more details on that. And that's why it looks like this. So this is overlapping. So the overall shape, again, you can see that same shape. It's just not as distorted, right? So this overall shape right here, this is the shape you want to memorize. That overall shape right there. And for a female, you just add this onto it, and then you memorize that shape. So it's very similar to the shape over here, like that. Very similar to that shape. It's just not being distorted as much. And that's how you get the idea of how it should look. So if you think about the attachment points and draw all those in, it makes much more sense why you're drawing what you're drawing. I'm just seeing if I can erase back far enough. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to go and erase some of this here now. With all that understanding also, but remember you have the rib cage back here still, but you also have right here this is the Leticia dorsi again your basic your your what people call their wing muscles when Bruce Lee would flex you can see those wing muscles behind him really big like a looks like a cobra back that's the muscle we're talking about right there and then we have the breast coming like this so let's go ahead and draw the breast in first because we know the attachment points where the breast should be so we'll just kinda I have a guideline there to make this go by faster notice it's not as stretched as this side this side the breast is stretched a lot more. This side looks almost like it would when the arms are down. Not quite, but pretty close. In fact, you can just start with how you would normally draw the breast when you're viewing it when the shoulders are down, because it's really similar. And then just raise that shape up just a little bit. And you might, you know, pull this part right here up just a little bit like that and just start kind of connecting this. So normally you'd have this shape here and this skin here, then you'd have the deltoid come out like that, remember? You'd have that deltoid shape come out like that, and then you have the arm coming down. So normally that's how it would look, and you'd have this piece of skin right here. Remember that 
overall shape I wanted you to memorize, which is like this. And it comes up like that. And I wanted you to memorize that shape. Keep that shape in mind because that's that that muscle is still there. It hasn't disappeared just because the arm is being lifted. So, but it goes like this now. It's kind of being up and shaped, being changed because now we're going between the breast and the deltoid. So imagine the shape right here. Deltoid comes like that. That muscle comes right along here and connects to the breast like that. So just imagine that shape is still there, but we're only going to be drawing some of it. So like that. And we're going to leave a lot of it out. And then the, we know the bone comes up like this, the collarbone, but we know the deltoid connects to the side of it, and that muscle is going to be overshadowed by the deltoid. Deltoid comes in front of it. And then the, you're going to have different arm muscles and stuff, but we want to just kind of, I want to just kind of show a little bit of right here. There's like, if you have this shadow coming from the side I'm thinking of, you might have a little bit of shadow on this side of the deltoid like this. So you have this kind of breaking point, so you kind of sh show that line, and then the this would be the pectoral muscle like that. You want to kind of show, well, actually it might be shaped like that, it'd be shaped more like that anyway. I still want to kind of show that shape in there. I just don't, I just want to do it very subtly with shadow, like so. And that would be the collarbone. And the collarbone would also have some shadow going along right here and all of that muscle back there would be in shadow. We have a little bit of shadow right here for this for those the cordial something muscles coming down, I forget the name. Like that, okay. Now all this right here is gonna be in shadow because you're gonna have where the pectoral muscle comes up like this and, and overlaps, it's gonna then turn into uh, the bicep muscle. So all that right there and then latissimus dorsi and all this connects. And you have the one of the muscles that comes underneath like this, and if they're really buff, you get a shape like that. But when they're not really buff, instead you just get a shape like this. We're just gonna come off like that. We'll call that good. Get rid of some more of those lines like that. And then we got to think about the shape of the breast. Remember, so now you have this shape right here. And now it says, how, how does it look when it's shadowed? I have most of it shadowed now. Then we're going to, um, let's see, let's go ahead and bring that up a little bit like that. This whole side will be shadowed a little bit. This side's going to be lit up more like so. I think we would have the shadow somewhere, the deepest part of the shadow of the breast is going to be like that there, and it's going to come like that side would be my deepest part of my shadow. But I also want to have a little bit of shadow come up like this to kind of show that shape, and then you'd also have a lot, you know, a lot of mid-tone right in here. Let's go ahead and put all that mid-tone in there. Sometimes I just, you know, cross hatch over things a couple times. You probably have some mid-tone in here as well. Because, you know, the brightest part is going to be somewhere like here along the nipple. But the nipples like that, that would be like your highlight area. And then you'd have this muscle here. You might be able to see like a little bit this. I'm not going to try to draw the arms in this one. Just want to draw some of the, you might be able to see a little bit of this muscle coming across like that. Okay. And then I want to draw a little bit of this. This this is where I, I really get into this in, in my courses on how to, you know, the form of the figure and how to how to shade the form of the figure, which is important to understand the three-dimensional aspect of it. I haven't gone to that too much in this lesson, so just let you know if you want to get more details like that, definitely check out my courses. I go through all those details, so I just wanted to show that little bit of 
break right there between these like that so that way we can see okay cool so hopefully that helps um, again this is just the surface like we're just getting to the surface teaching of these principles here it gets far more deeper but as a you know as a somewhere to start so you understand like the basic mechanics of what's happening underneath hopefully that will help you in your in your drawings and uh, you'll start seeing improvement in what you're doing because you'll understand a little bit of the mechanics that are happening underneath it so you're like oh hey that's why that looks like that and see that line that just happened there I don't like that so I'm gonna go back here gotta keep my shading consistent like this there we go by the way I'm doing all this in Photoshop with a standard um, brush that comes with Photoshop and in fact it's, you don't even have to download it it's one of these brushes here that come one of the dry media brushes I think it's either this one or this one yeah it's this one so this is the one I'm using right here I just turn it down in size so I just knock it back a few make it smaller so I can yeah, and then you just treat it like a pencil and you you know you can cross hatch like that cross hatch another direction so the same same principles as pencil and it actually works a lot like a pencil and there you have it so alright cool I kinda made that breast a little bit too dark now so I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of some of that mainly what I wanted to, I just wanted to kinda darken up a little bit of this right here about like that that should be good yeah anyway looks good maybe darken some of that behind the breast there All right, so that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. Hopefully, again, this will help you draw stuff. If it did help you, do me a favor. Go ahead and hit the like button. Leave a comment if you would. Hit that share button and share it on your favorite social network because if you enjoyed it and learned something from it, I'm sure somebody else will learn something from it as well. It's actually really hard to find long, long-form teaching on YouTube that go into all these kinds of details. This is stuff you usually only find in courses and stuff. And I go even more detail than this in my anatomy course and even in my how to draw anime people and bodies course which has an anatomy section in it. And anatomy is anatomy. So when I teach anatomy, it's just anatomy. It's not anatomy for anime. Anime and anatomy is the same. It's just you're stylizing the, the figure but the anatomy stays the same. So you can, you can buy the course just for a quick anatomy um, if you just want to get you know, get anatomy down within like five hours. I do plan on making a crash course for anatomy for those that don't want to go through all the details. Um, and that way you can still learn the principles of anatomy without having to spend you know, so many hours doing it. Maybe like a five hour course or something instead of, you know, 60. Um, yeah, so anyway, that's that. And then make sure to hit that bell notification if you haven't already, if you haven't already subscribed. If you have subscribed, still hit that bell notification. Otherwise, YouTube won't let you know that I made a new video. But you know what? Even then, sometimes YouTube still doesn't let you know that I made a new video. So what I recommend doing is go to my website, masterpaintingnow.com. The link is in the description. And click on newsletter. I only send out newsletters every now and again. It's just to show that, hey, I have a new, I have a new lesson up that's free. Or, hey, here's a new course, which only happens once in a great while. <laughs> Literally, like, this last, just give an idea. I was like a year before my last course in this next this I just came out with the fundamentals of drawing course it was like a year before that that I had another course out so sometimes I come out with a course six months sometimes it's a year so it's really good to subscribe for that reason too because it might be a long time you might forget about me and you know I have some new course out that you really wanted and now, now you will never know about it but that's, that's how I recommend to, to just to stay in, to make sure you stay up to date with what I'm coming out with new especially the free lessons that come out like this one but yeah, so like I said, it's really hard to find lessons like this, and that's why you want to share this video, because people will, will, will they'll thank you for it, because it's hard to find long form stuff like this that goes into all these details, and these details are necessary to draw from your imagination. Even to draw from reference, these details are really important, because it helps you understand better, you know, how to do these kind of things, like why things look the way they look when you're looking at it, and how to draw from your, you're, you're partly drawing from your mind, and then you're also using the reference like what I like to draw from reference is mostly drawing from my mind, but then I use the reference to go, oh, okay, that's exactly how that shape should look. 
you know, so I would like draw this from my mind and then and like we did here, and then I would go and look at an actual model and go, okay, okay, that that could be a little bit different, you know, get those like fully realistic details, which is really hard to do from your mind, but you can get really cool looking stuff from imagination that looks like almost realistic um, and, you know, really good for comic books and things like that, really good for cartooning. You know, all cartoonists and everything, they know all this stuff. This is the fundamental stuff that's underneath everything. So when, they, when they're when they just like sketching out a character, and they're like, hey, look, at here's a rib cage, you know, they come like that and, you know, have the arms come out like this and then, you know, have the arm come up like that and this arm is coming out that way. All this knowledge is in this in the in the fundamentals. You know, like let, what what would the breast look like from you know from this area? Like, oh, if the rib cage is kind of come like that, the breast would kind of you know they would hang across like this, you know, like that. So you'd have that, and then you have the rib cage coming down right here, like that. The side view of the rib cage coming like this, and you can you know you can start to see like this would be how. Then you have another pectoral muscle come up like that. And the, you know, the pectoral muscle would actually stop. Then you have the latissimus dorsi come in here. But all this is important. You have the you know ab muscles come in this area. And you get the idea. But you can start to you know just kind of map out some of this stuff and how you know how should it look. You have the head up here or something like that. You get the idea. Hopefully that's kind of making, it's in my mind. I know what I'm doing, even though even though it might not be making a whole lot of sense yet because I'm just kind of sketching very quickly. But I know what, hopefully it kind of looked to you like what it was looking like to me. <laughs> like the person kind of coming back anyway. Um, but yeah, so it, to be able to do anything like that or you know, what if you wanted to draw someone like lifting up something, you know? You'd be like, okay, I know that you have the head here and it's going to be kind of a top view so you know what the shape of the head should be. You know, you're going to have the, the back muscles like that. You know, you're going to have the tra trapezius. You're going to have the deltoids, you're going to have the collarbones coming up right here. Then you have the deltoid, and the deltoid is going to be coming, you know, down like this. And then you're going to have the biceps. You know, all that, you're going to have the pectoral muscles. You know, this is kind of like a top-down view, sort of, but not, you know, it's kind of like a front, because it's coming at us, so it's almost like a top-down view. Right, so you kind of have these, these shapes in here. Like that, and then you'd have the arm coming down. And then you'd have the hand. I can have the other hand here. Anyway, the point is that then you'd have the, you know, how uh, how far short that would be. Who knows? And then you'd have. I mean, I, I can figure it out exactly, but you'd have the buttocks, the buttocks here, the legs coming out. They're coming in back of the arms. Let's say. Like that. That would be like a kneecap, and the leg coming down, foot, and then he'd be picking up something here. I don't know what he's picking up, but, well, actually, if it's on, <laughs> unless he's on the edge of a building, it couldn't do, it couldn't do that, because this would be almost the ground right here, so it'd have to come, come across like that, so the bar is like this, right? So he's picking up something. Hopefully, that kind of, you can kind of see that and what I'm doing there, but, you know, this is how you'd start out, you know, you just kind of start, there's different ways to do it, um, but you won't be able to do this, you know, if you haven't got that, that first knowledge in your, in your head, you know, that kind of making his arms be, um, they're coming toward us, so they're kind of being, what's that, I guess, foreshortened, so they're getting, they're getting bigger as they're coming toward us, and this right here be, all this right here be in shadow, because we can't, and then this would be the crotch area, and then the buttocks. And this would kind of be in shadow as well, not as much as back there, though. But anyway, the point is that you won't be able, you won't be able to do this, and if you don't have that under structure of what's supposed to be there, you know. But when you when you understand the anatomy and everything that's happening underneath, it makes all this a lot easier. So that'd be like his feet or something. Now I feel like I don't like when I when I do something like this for a video, and they don't kind of don't kind of finish it because then it's like, does that make sense or am I? I know to me it makes sense. I know I can turn this into a drawing, but I just don't know if it makes sense enough to you guys. 
And then finally, if you work the sketch out a little bit more, you know, maybe have them not squat so close to the ground, whatever you're trying to do. That because originally I wanted to kind of have the um, oops, I wanted to have the I wanted to have this thing coming down like that, but I made them too close to the ground. So if I have them like pulling something like this, you know. I don't, know, I, don't know, I don't know what exactly he's pulling, but he's pulling something that's heavy. He's trying to pull it up out of the ground or something. And that would be like a general idea. All right. Thanks for watching. Again, go ahead and like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Head over to the newsletter, sign up, get get new lessons when they come out that are free. And, yeah, thanks for watching.